I want to share with you just a little bit about how this is happening here in our church here at Oak Hills as we are together reconciling all things. And to do so, I would like to introduce to you our local outreach minister, Dean Mathis. Guys, will you give a, a warm Oak Hills welcome to Dean? Come on up here, buddy. Good to see you. Have a seat. I wanted, I wanted Dean to come and, and share with us just a little bit about how, we've been talking a little bit here about how hope overflows. It just kind of overflows from one life to another. It's the beautiful thing that God does. But I wanted you to be able to share with us just a little bit about how God is doing that through our church, specifically with our partnership with Habitat for Humanity. I've had the privilege to have a front row seat. I'm watching several hundred volunteers in the fall and the spring from our church come together to really give hope. And we anticipated that with the first family, the Ramirez family, uh, this fall in building their, their first home and uh, building it in a tight, efficient way. But it wasn't but until a few weeks into the build that we realized the more hope that was going to happen was more restorative hope for the family beyond the house. Uh, and it was kind of a surprise how it came at us. Okay, so tell, tell us more about the, the restorative hope. Tell, tell us what you... Yeah, it was about the fifth week in, in the build or so. And in that context, we usually start with a real brief devotion prayer and end the day the same way, at least with a prayer. And we're closing that prayer of the day. And Fabian, the father and husband of the Ramirez family, was standing next to me. And he leaned over and he said, hey, do you think we can pray for Chantel, his wife? I said, well, of course. You know, and people are starting to leave. And um, I said, what, what's going on? He said, well, she lost our third baby this last Thursday. And this was Saturday uh, of the build. And I said, yeah, buddy. And I, of course, I called her, buddy. Course, everybody came back immediately, laid hands on him and prayed some powerful prayers of healing, just restoration, just covering him and Chantel. It was a beautiful moment. And when we finished, he turned and looked at me. And he was really close. And he goes, is this what it feels like to be part of a church? I said, yeah, brother, it sure does. Oh my goodness. That is, I mean, what a testimony I know, right there. I know. You didn't see it coming. Well, you know? I'm just glad that in that moment, somebody was there to, to be able yeah. to pray with them, but also to just be there for them in their, their, that time of need. It you know, was really great. You know, men disciple men, women disciple women, and the gals who had some, had some similar experiences got Chantel's phone number, started connecting with her, sending her flowers, just building that friendship towards restoration and hope. It was beautiful to watch, and their friendship grew. And the next thing you know, I thought I was watching scenes of HGTV. They're exchanging ideas about how to decorate the house, what colors to, you know, to make. And, you know, I thought, this is amazing how these guys have really built a friendship. But as the weeks went on, too, they realized as I got closer to the home actually becoming their home, Chantel and Fabian had given their bed to their daughter, and they were going to sleep on the floor. And these ladies who had struck this friendship and just been bringing a lot of hope to Chantel got money together and they bought her a bed. Oh my goodness. Bought them a bed. It was really neat. Yeah. That is awesome. Hey, you were, you were also telling me a story about an Oak Hills family yeah. that hope has just kind of overflowed through oh my gosh. them in yeah. this deal. Yeah, those guys are kind of a walking party of hope. Uh, Lorena Donyes and her son Rico. And Enrique are sitting right over here. Actually, I saw him just before the service started. When we started back in the fall uh, looking to do the home builds, they were so excited as a church that we were going to do this in our community. They came up and said, they got to be a part of this. Because just this last year, th through saving and hoping for a home of their own, they've got themselves their own home. But they wanted to be a part of giving that hope to somebody else as a church. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That, that is amazing. It sounds like it was something that they could relate to. Yeah, yeah, very much so. It's not that those guys felt like they had a big uh, building prowess before they started, but I've watched them become pretty good builders, you know, on the side. It's, it's fun to see that. But it's been neat because they've realized as a family, here's a single mom with her two teenage sons, that the hope they've received, they're giving it as, as the hands and feet of Jesus, that same hope to another family. And now they've done it for both families in the fall and the spring. And I am so proud of you guys. Oh, it's exciting. Amen. 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 So, so now we're in the spring and we're yeah. in the middle of a, a second build. Yeah. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit about how that's going? And yeah, yeah, it was really fun. Uh, uh, the first of the year we had a meet and greet. Habitat does this great thing. We're meeting the families together to meet the people uh, that we're going to be building for and they get a chance to meet us. So about seven or eight of us uh, were with uh, Santun and his family, his wife, all that. And then uh, Cynthia, who's four, and Abraham, who is two and a half now. 
And uh, so we had a great conversation. We're doing our best. Um, there's a little bit of a language barrier. They're, they're from yeah. Burma, the refugees from Burma. Okay. And so they were speaking Burmese, of course, and we were speaking uh, Texan English. <laughs> and we were having a lot of fun. Uh, and we did a pretty good job, I think, because Saw is, is pretty helpful in translating. But the best conversation that happened was when we were walking away, and here comes little Abraham, who'd been quiet as a church mouse the whole night, tugging on my shirt. And, he, and he's looking, you know, up at me, and I'm looking down at little Abraham. He'll be up here in a second with his bow tie. And he said, for the question, you, you build my family a house? And, you know, and I looked at him, I said, yeah, buddy, we're, we're, going, we're going to build you a house. And all of a sudden, that went from a question to exclamation. He started jumping up and down and going, <laughs> you build my family a house, you build my family a house. Uh, I said, we sure are. And so uh, we were ready to start building that night, but I, I'm happy to report that we're ahead of schedule. And for Abraham and his family, we'll have them in their home. Uh, and I think it'll be built before Easter. Isn't that awesome? Oh, my yeah. goodness. That is awesome. You understood that, didn't you? Oh, uh, it's build a house. very clear. Very Church, clear. we have the Sawtoon family with us today. Right. Let's welcome them up to the stage. Come on up this way. We are so happy to have them with us. Abraham, you are looking sharp, my man. If I could only borrow that. I think we lost a shoe. We're getting it. Oh. We're getting it fixed. There we All go. All right. You, come on up look here. At, look at Cynthia. Up, up here man, with us? Her dress. Come on All up right. here, guys. On, We're guys. so thankful to have you guys with us. We wanted to take a moment. There you go. That's good. I think he's kind of liking this. Come on up here. So first of all, we just wanted to uh, spend some time with them and give them an opportunity to say anything if they wanted to, to say anything to us. He's ready to go. I want to say thank you to invite, to invite us to worship together. Uh, I want to say thank you again. Again, thank you. Good job. Yeah. All right, church, if you will, extend a hand. We're going to pray for this family. Father, we are so grateful for the way you work in our lives, the way you fill our, hope, our lives with hope and the way that you overflow that hope into other lives, the way that you have allowed us and the Sawtoon family to, to intersect for our, our paths to, to cross each other. We pray for protection for them as they continue to work on this house, and we uh, pray for uh, protection for, for all of our folks as we walk alongside of each other to not just build a home, but to build hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we give them another round of applause? Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see what happens in the next service. Now, uh, I really, I'm so excited about the work that God is doing in us and through us. And, and Dean uh, has done a marvelous job of, of leading us in this effort and our local outreach efforts. And it's just amazing to see how <laughs> hope just keeps overflowing. We found out last week that someone just paid for the, the next build, $57,000 it costed for us and our part to, to build a home, and someone's already just paid for the home in the fall. Isn't that amazing? And, and many, many of you have been so generous, you've been generous in, in, in so many different ways, but it, it's just amazing to see what God can do when we just open our lives to hope. And we've been talking about overflowing hope, but, but I want to ask you a question now. I mean, we, we've seen some of these stories, some of these examples of how hope overflows, but my question for you is, do you believe that God can use you to bring hope to another life? <laughs> 